to the first episode of Vault Science with your host Bonkill and Diacola. Uh, my name's Bonkill, uh, also known as John. I am the owner of Devoted, and I've been making vaults for, I don't know, a couple years. Diet's relatively new to the vault game, but he's also been making vaults for about two years now. I'm Diacola. And I've been a major vault designer and joined Sipcraft 2.0's lifespan. And I mainly involve Bash and vaults. So, we'll talk about Bastions on a different episode. Today we're just going to be talking about vaults and the vault slope. So, first question you probably have is, what the fuck is a vault? Uh, to understand that, you need to understand the core mechanics of one plugin called Citadel. The idea behind Citadel is if you have a block that you want to protect, like this, this cobblestone here, you can hit it with a rare resource like stone, iron, gold, emerald, ingots, whatever is configured on the server to actually be a Citadel material, and you can defend those items against people coming along and breaking them and stealing them. That being said, it's limited protection. so. By hitting this cobblestone with a piece of stone, it's only protecting it for 50 breaks, which means a raider can come along and walk up to the cobblestone and break it 50 times with a pickaxe to actually break it and have it drop. So that's the protection plugin that's used on a number of servers that we call Citadel servers or Civ servers, and they're all essentially anarchy-based political simulations. The whole idea is to let players sort of enforce their own rule of law, um, which ties into the next plugin you need to understand to understand why anyone would want a vault, Prison Pearl. Prison Pearl is a player moderation tool which allows players to enforce their own laws of the land. It achieves this by having people kill each other, in which that will then imprison a the player to the end islands, or can banish them from certain areas of the overworld. Uh, it then gives you a player essence as such, in which you can store in a chest, as shown by John. Right, so we just pearled diet. Uh, I pearled diet, and let's just say that this, this is pearl. Once you actually pearl someone, you need to actually store it somewhere. Um, the way that the plugin works is you can't keep it in your inventory, you can't put it in an ender chest, you have to put it into a chest in the overworld somewhere. So once you put it into a chest, you can reinforce it, but that's not going to do much. Because, I mean, a raider can come along and just break the chest. That's going to take, you know, 20 minutes at most if you reinforce it with diamond. So people had to come up with ways to store their pearls in a way that would prevent, you know, the friends of a raider from coming along and actually breaking them out. So the solution they came up with was to simply cover it in obsidian. Because obsidian is one of the hardest blocks in Minecraft to break. So when you reinforce a piece of cobblestone... It doesn't really take that long to break it, because the average time it takes to actually break a cobblestone, especially with an efficiency 5 pickaxe, is very short. But if you try and break a piece of obsidian 2,000 times, you're going to have a really bad day. So, the uh, basic premise of a vault is to create a pyramid of obsidian protecting a chest which contains ender pearls that... Uh, Prison pearls, I guess. So now that we've got basic vault set up, uh, we're going to explain two important terms when talking about vaults. The first one I want to cover is layers. So the key point with layers is it's how many blocks is covering the chest. So as you can see here, it's two blocks on each point to the chest. Therefore, we would call this a two layer vault. The this is a vault as you would have seen in the early days of Civcraft, which was the original server that had these plugins. It took a while for people to start thinking about how they can best spend their resources to provide the most amount of protection. So when you're doing a vault like this, where it's one-to-one, -one, where the height is equal to the width, the, the width is two, the height is two, it's, it's a one-to-one -one ratio of vault, you end up having issues because in Minecraft, uh, a player's character is two blocks 
tall, which means if he comes in from the side here, if he comes in this way, starts digging, he doesn't have enough space to actually go through a one block tunnel like that. He actually has to dig space for him to actually move forward. Where if you're digging just straight down, you can just dig straight down, there's no issue. Your player character can, can actually be in that hole. So this creates an issue with the slope of vaults, which uh, people have spent a lot of time thinking about coming up with algorithms and trying to figure out the most efficient way to actually protect vaults. Okay, so the first major change to slopes after what this slope is, a one-to-one -one slope, is the 5-6 slope. Now, the key difference between a one-to-one -one slope and a 5-6 slope is that a 5-6 is noticeably taller. Now, there's a very important reason for this. Um, as noted by John, when breaking into a vault, it's not equal from every direction. Uh, if you come side in, you'll have to break more blocks to make more space for your player. So, the 5-6 slope aims to counteract that by making the vault taller. And it does this by every fifth block, it raises to the slope entirely. This makes the vault taller, so when someone tries to break top down, they have to break more blocks. And the important thing to note as well is that the width of the vault is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and the height of it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, which is why it's called a 5, 6 slope vault. Diet and I were both sort of raised uh, from new friend to power player, believing that the 5, 6 slope is just what you did. You just didn't question it. You just always did it. We started questioning it, though. Um, we looked into it, and we realized that not a lot of people had actually thought about how raiders break a vault. Um, so we, we started coming up with different break paths that we could do. And we quickly learned that it would be pretty pretty efficient to just break in from the side. Like that. And that's a lot easier than going down from the side or from, from the top. So looking at that, what we did next is we created something that we called the egg slope. The key thing about the egg slope to know is it's equal on all points of entry when trying to break to the chest. So as you can see here with the 5-6 slope, if you came diagonally as John showed, you'd be able to get less breaks than you would be if you were to go top down or side in. Five breaks instead of six. Correct. So the point with the egg slope we created was to make a perfectly equal vault. And we achieved this by taking the most known break methods with two people and then using them to build the slopes of our vaults. So this was an incredibly manual process, which took a lot of time. And uh, additionally, it was also only something that was successful when dealing with uh, break methods that were achievable by two people. Uh, which we're not even going to go into the egg slope that much because at this point it's been eclipsed because of much graver issues. Um, which, you know, we're, we're going to make this video interesting. We're going to reveal that grave issue. So around 1.8, there was something that was changed in the default Minecraft mechanics, which not a whole lot of people noticed or cared about because it didn't really affect them at all. If you're sitting in a hole with another person in... 1.7, 1 1.6 uh, versions of Minecraft, you couldn't actually dig down if you were in a hole with another person. So when you started digging, you, you'd hit the other person because their hitbox filled your screen entirely. It, it would fill everything that you could do. But in 1.8, that changed. The hitbox became smaller, which means that two people can actually very conveniently sit in a hole together and dig down and break. This created some huge issues with vaults, um, where we were used to having only a slight nerf to a downward uh, break path. We, we suddenly realized that you could fit four people in a, in a single tunnel and dig straight down, which means that vault slopes actually need to reflect that change and need to be much, 
much higher. Which led to our next slope, called the uh, the rocket slope, which I don't think we've even really released yet. Not particularly. I don't think it's it's gone live on any server. I, I well actually no, it, it went live on Civex, but it wasn't really like it, it wasn't. What about the realms? Mm, didn't really count. I didn't actually do it to the letter. <laughs> so that's the next sort of stage of vault design that we haven't really. I mean, we we've explored sort of the process of it, but we haven't actually thought about the uh, the new brick paths that fitting more people in a tunnel can actually open up. So that's going to be the next stage of vault development. Uh, we don't we we both don't really play that much anymore. So I don't think we're going to be the ones to uh, develop the next sort of stage of history. But uh, for people who are interested in learning about it, this has been the first episode of Vault Science. We're going to do a couple more episodes talking about different things, such as different rating techniques, uh, different ways to break a vault, and of course, bastion vaults.